you gave me a whole new way to see the world. A massive thank you to the publisher of Etonites for sponsoring this episode. We also have a copy of it to give away. If you're a fan of things like Persona, then you're going to want to watch this one. Let us know down in the comments what you think of it. Yeah, this is a, a strange one to describe, really, and we'll do our best to do just that in a moment. But every so often, a game comes out of nowhere and kind of slaps you in the face in a positive way, I must add. And this is definitely that sort of game. Yeah, it really is. This has been out on other platforms, and from what we understand from the community, it's a little bit of a hidden gem. So we're going to talk to you about all the mechanics, exactly what it is, and uh, maybe you'll be interested. So what's it all about? Well, let's find out. One day, out of nowhere. Let's start off with narrative, and we're going to do our best to explain to you what this one's about. Um, Glenn, over to you. <laughs> okay, so you have yourself, the character that you create, and your best friend, Charney, and he's trying to set you up on a dating app at the start. It's, it's kind of everyday, normal life for a couple of young fellas. And um, a short way into the game, there is some sort of disaster, and you and Charney make your way into a bunker where you have to stay for a while. And upon release from here you find other survivors, including like a pop, an idol, as they call it in Japan, and she kind of joins your ragbag team. Now, it's a strange hybrid of some dating aspects, but far more like an action RPG almost, where you're fighting against what used to be humanity, these strange creatures, as well as having boss battles as well, making your way through labyrinths, and also gaining attribute points that you can put into your character as you go along. Yeah, absolutely. When I heard dating, I did not expect this game. You really are thinking more along the lines of Persona, however conversation and dialogue trees give you attribute points which then go into that aspect of the game. It's actually quite a nice system. There's also a mobile phone which conveys a lot of the narrative and again there are aspects in there that tie into those attribute points as you gain them. Yeah, so you're spoken to by this, uh, this person that right back at the start when you were set up on this dating app you were having a chat with but it soon becomes clear that she's almost otherworldly. I guess is the best way to put it. And there is some sort of greater cause going on that you get embroiled with. And as Mark said, there are these attribute points, but it's not skill tree based. It's more conversational. And the answers that you give in certain situations will then award you a point in particular areas such as confidence or expression. And these will build your character as you go through. So yeah, narratively, in a nutshell, think 28 days later meets Persona. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'd say that sums it up quite nicely. Gameplay wise then, this is where things really took us by surprise. So aside from having those dating aspects, which actually are much lighter and more ingrained into the basic conversational gameplay, you've also got real time action combat. You have, yeah. So your main character early on in the game um, is attacked and has their arm chopped off. Like it's literally <laughs> just, you know, whopped off there in front of you. And you instead are given power and you sort of grow a new arm that can manifest into like a sword and what have you as you go along and uh, this is how you'll do the, the vast majority of your attacks. You start off just you being able to attack and then your party members start to assist you in later battles and it, it relies quite heavily on almost like a parry system where you'll need to look for a telltale sign that an enemy is about to attack, generally a, a red flash and then you'll press the A button to, to parry and this will stun them long enough that you can get some attacks in yourself. So with that mechanic, the window for the parry is pretty short. You need to be very fast. I did find actually there are different difficulty modes and when you switch it down to easy, that window seems a little larger, which I found just more pleasant to play. Alongside that, as Glenn said, there are some boss fights in there and they'll really rely on that mechanic. And what happens is they'll have a shield up and you have like what's called a power fist and that move needs to be charged up by wailing on the enemy and you can see it growing in the corner of the screen and when it reaches max you can perform your power fist move and then there are some almost QTEs which take place and it breaks their shield and you can start to do actual damage but all the while you're keeping your eye out for a red flash and having to dodge out of the way at just the right moment. When it's working well, it actually does feel quite fluid, doesn't it? It does. What it stops you from doing, basically, is butter mashing, yeah. 
because you just can't. You, you can't cancel your attack once you press the attack button. So if the enemy then attacks you and gets him first, you will be hit. So you need to be quite measured with your attacks and uh, sometimes even almost wait to be attacked and then counter back to, to cause maximum damage and to break down that, that shield, as Mark mentioned a moment ago. Every now and then it builds up. I forget the name of the move, but you press basically the R button and it will just wallop them and they're done. Yeah, even then though, I'd say you can't necessarily just button mash mm. because if you are overcrowded yeah um you still need to watch out for that flash because if one of them attacks and you do get that parry as far as i've seen so far it, it stuns all of them yeah and then you can get in there and, and and defeat them so you can get away with it a bit more but i wouldn't recommend it yeah it's a good point we actually compared it a little to some of the batman arkham games in terms of the combat except it's not as forgiving with that quick turning mechanic if you're being attacked from behind absolutely yeah you do need to sometimes almost just sit back and allow them to come to you rather than being, you know, all guns blazing. Yeah. In those areas as well, outside of combat, there are also puzzle sections that will have you taking on various different puzzles, things like here where you can see me lighting up the track, although I thought it was far more complex than it actually was. Yeah. And those progress and change throughout the game, some of them even relying on you using the parry mechanic to open a door in this section, for example. Within combat, you've also got team member skills. Now you do gain new members of the team, as you can see, and they'll provide moves such as healing abilities, as you can see on the aura on the ground here. There's a fast travel system, which allows you to progress and move to areas throughout a dungeon to speed up traversal. And I think, as we say, the overall takeaway is the dating aspects are just a very minor aspect and don't let that put you off. This is very much more like a persona experience. Yeah, the dating is almost done through conversation, but it never feels out of place. Mm -hmm. It feels like um, when you watch a movie and you have those light-hearted moments, despite the fact the world has just ended, and these characters have a an offbeat conversation for a moment, it feels like that without completely grinding the game to a halt. Yeah, I think as well, much of that is to do with the fact that the characters are all voice acted. And although Charney is like your, uh, he's almost your comic relief character. Yes, he you, is. You like love to hate him. His presence there is useful for making it feel more natural. Uh, oh, dude, by the way, I need to show you something. Visually, this was another surprise for us. The game appears to be running, locked out, and with perfect frame pacing. It looks really smooth, it controls well, there's very little input latency, and the engine is holding up nicely. It looks great, doesn't it? It does look great, and there are some nice little touches, certainly in terms of the lighting, as you make your way through these kind of dank, almost like subway systems, aren't they? Like the underground, as you'd have over here. And uh, that arm that I mentioned earlier is kind of glowing, and you'll see the reflection of it on the walls or on the floor at times. It, it does actually look very impressive. Yeah, we were both surprised. One, because we hadn't heard of the game before, and two, we did not expect it to run and look like this on Switch. No, for sure. And then you've got the cutscenes, which again, just look highly polished. Um, they have that anime look to them. The whole game certainly gives that vibe, but it's, it's so much better presented than perhaps I was expecting. And there's no reason for that other than I'd not heard of it before. And it was a nice surprise. Completely. There are other elements as well that add things, what I would call style points. Little transitions between screens where you'd see almost like again I, I hate to keep saying persona mm. but that is almost like the pinnacle isn't it for that style and it's obviously a very well known one that people can just get an idea of straight exactly. away isn't it yeah so you have those great little transitions and stuff like that and yeah overall the game's running well we haven't had any issues with performance or crashes in terms of the audio we mentioned the voice acting already and it is of a good standard it's very appropriate for the or well, the tone certainly and when it comes to the music itself, it does do a good job of making you feel quite isolated, mm -hmm. as, as obviously you, you, know, you would in such a situation. And it's also not obtrusive. It kind of tinkers along in the background and just adds to the experience. In terms of value then, this one is retailing at £26.99 and there is a standard physical available as well. In terms of length, it's not perhaps as long as some of the games that we've mentioned already. You're looking at, I don't know, maybe 11 to 15 hours, depending on your play style and your competence, dare I say. So I suppose it depends how much you want out of a, an ARPG, an action RPG. If you're someone that needs 20, 30, 40 hours, that's not going to be here. If you want something a bit more succinct, you'll find it. Yeah, for sure. So let us know what you think of this one down in the comments. As I said at the start, we will be giving away a copy. And a big thank you to those guys for sponsoring this episode. It was all a bit uh, a bit last minute for us, wasn't it? But we were really keen to actually cover this one. So uh, quite happy to go along and do it.
Yeah, absolutely that. A quick thank you to our patrons and our channel members, as always, for your continued support. And to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming. We need to focus. We have 11 days to find the core and destroy it. Yes, we gotta go. Still, we were supposed to see the world.